I've had some wonderful news for Queensland. The re-examination of Sir Joe Bjorka Peterson is expected to be completed tomorrow, the last formal public hearing day of the Fitzgerald Inquiry. Back in 1986, the run-down port office and its riverside grounds were ripe for development. The port office hotel development to Singapore businessman Robert Sung, about the time Sung gave him a $100,000 donation to the National Party. He delivered bags of cash to his office, that, which but, went into the uh, Very much I would, indeed I would. I can't. I don't want to get involved in a whole lot of information. Yeah, it's it's really and really 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 since he dropped the probate taxes and it just grew, grew, grew. And uh, it, it think that he was on some big stealing charge. Sir Joe told the Fitzgerald Inquiry in 1988 that he didn't know of Robert Sorn's business. Charges Sir Joe with one count of official corruption and two of perjury. Perjury carries a maximum penalty of 14 years jail and corruption charges come almost three years after Sir Joe resigned as Premier, ending a 19-year And, uh, you know, he's to go to trial in September. Uh, I don't know how he's going to have a fair jury. I wish they'd pick the friends of Joe to go on the jury. We've made up their mind already. When I was 19 and had nearly finished a marketing diploma, I was summoned for jury service. As a student, I could have been excused, but I preferred to go, and I was lucky that it didn't interfere with my studies too much. Some days I'd be required for a case, others I'd be home by lunchtime. In three weeks, I'd served on a couple of trials, small criminal matters like assault and vandalism. I saw it as my civic duty. I don't know how I feel about it now, or if I'd go through it again. Sitting in the dock was Sir Joe Bielke Peterson, the former Premier of Queensland. He was Premier when I was born, all through my childhood and the years I went to school. Now, some of us would be chosen to pass judgment on him. <laughs> this is the fifth trial I've been on this month. Yeah, well, then you got no chance. Right. All rise. Your Honour, there is before the court an indictment charging Johannes Bjorki Peterson with one count of perjury. The Crown would wish to proceed with that indictment. That on the 5th day of December 1988, at Brisbane in the state of Queensland, you, in the course of the hearing of evidence in a commission of inquiry, knowingly gave false testimony to the effect that... As to at hear the time it read out, the charge sounded complicated but it meant that Sir Joe was charged with perjury over evidence he gave at the Fitzgerald Inquiry three years before. He had claimed that at the time he was given $100,000 by a developer named Robert Sung, he knew very little about Sung and his plans to build a luxury hotel in Brisbane. The prosecution alleged he knew a lot more. Are you guilty or not guilty? I am not guilty. May it please your honor. I appear for the accused with my learned friend, Mr. Gundlach. Begin. Like a bloody lottery. Diana May Howard. Challenge. Thank you, Miss Howard. You can return to your seat. Gary Graham Goss. <laughs> Challenge. It's 22. They don't like any of us. Luke Edmund Shaw. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. This guy has a good buck. When Luke Shaw stepped out of the crowd, he didn't look like the type Sir Joe would have approved of. Yet after so many rejections, he was the first one chosen. And the prisoner at the bar, whom you shall have in charge, and true verdict given accordance to the evidence, so help you God. So help me God. <clears throat> Matthew Shea. You shall well and truly try and true deliverance make between our sovereign lady of the Queen and the prisoner at the bar whom you shall have in charge and true verdict given accordance to the evidence. So help you God. So help me God. Does any member of the jury feel that by reason of any association or for any other reason, he or she would be unable to reach an impartial verdict in this case? How long do you think that we'll be on the 
jury. Well, the bailiff says it might go on for a month. Oh, I hope not. That's a long time. <laughs> yeah. You'd get out of the way of things, wouldn't you? I mean, you'd lose all your habits. We might be out of here in a few weeks. Oh, yes, yeah, so Joe might confess. <laughs> well, I hope we don't have to be here on a Saturday and a Sunday. Oh, where are you taking us to lunch? Doesn't he look the part? Very snappy threats. I, uh, have to go somewhere afterwards. <laughs> Nice. Mind if I sit down, Kim? Yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> Giving you a bit of stick, aren't they? <laughs> the essence of the charge is that the accused told deliberate lies about his knowledge of Mr. Robert Sung's business activities. The issue, which is central to the case, is the state of the accused knowledge of Mr. Sung and his business activities in Queensland at this time. What was Mr. Sung, in fact, doing? Well, there had been a proposal from early 1986 for the establishment of a hotel, a luxury hotel, on the site of the port office in Brisbane. You'll hear that in the course of 1986 and through the beginning of 1987, in pushing that proposal, Mr. Sung had much contact with the accused. And in the course of these meetings, these uh, representations, the payment of a sum of $100,000 was made to the accused. Those events will be unveiled in the course of the evidence that you will hear. I propose to call first evidence that will establish what the accused said on the 5th of December, 1988. Um, at the time that that gentleman brought the $100,000 to you, was he at that very time actually in business in Queensland? Not that I know of, no. I don't know that he was, no. Did he have any <clears throat> plans to get into business in Queensland, I according think, to what you understood? I think he I think he may have wanted to get into business in, in Queensland sometime, yes. And what did you understand to be the area of business in Queensland that he was contemplating getting into? Well, they, uh, they were, he was an overseas man from Hong Kong, and they had all sorts of businesses. What range of businesses did... Uh... Did you understand that this particular gentleman from Hong Kong was contemplating getting into? Well, if you put it like that, I believe he wanted to, like most of them, get into the hotel business somewhere. Oh. Where? In Brisbane or in the country? Well, I think anywhere they had a suitable proposition. Well then, Sir Joe, isn't it clear that well, you would have had some discussion with this gentleman about his plans for the future investment in Queensland at some stage? Now you talk to me like that, I can remember we what it was we did say. He came back after many months to start a cocoa plantation in North Queensland, growing coconuts up there, coconut palms. Was he also interested in uh, hotel development? Yes, I, I believe he could have been interested in hotel, yeah, sure. In Brisbane or in the country? Well, I didn't have any discussions in depth with him. I met him that occasion that he came to see me. I don't think he was there more than five the minutes. The case hinged on Sir Joe's answers. The question we had to answer was, how much had Sir Joe known of Robert Sung's business plans? But as I sat there listening, I kept thinking, how can you tell if he's lying? It just sounds like Sir Joe. <laughs> 